Hi, we're Britt and Mike, and this is Leah. We're converting our 2021 Ford Transit van into a home on wheels. Last week, Mike installed our 15 gallon gray water tank under the van. And in this week's video, he's starting on our plumbing system and setting up the drainage for our kitchen sink and shower. So if you've been following along with our build, uh, you might have noticed last week when I installed the propane remote fill kit on the back bumper of the van. And I have to admit, that was a mistake. If I were to leave the remote fill in that location, when the van ultimately ends up dragging at some point, it will, it's an extended, and uh, the rear bumper is a long way from the rear tires. So it's just inevitable that it's gonna drag. So that location would obviously be bad for the remote fill itself and also could be dangerous because if there's sparks or anything near the propane, that could cause a fire. So I made a poor choice in choosing the location for the remote fill kit and now I'm gonna show you what I'm doing to rectify it. But first, here's a quick, simple explanation as to why I put it in the location that I did. So I'm currently lying under the van. I have this angled piece of steel here. It's not the bracket for the uh, remote fill kit, obviously, but I'm just gonna use it to demonstrate. It is the same shape as the bracket for the remote fill kit. So the way that it's designed is to go flat up on a flat surface here and then the remote fill is on the front of it, right? So you just drill a couple screws to the bottom and it, that's it. It mounts directly to some surface on the outside of the van. Unfortunately, on the sides of the van, there are no flat surfaces. The van comes down to kind of a point and uh, all of the, the cross braces and stuff in the van are like seven, eight inches above the bottom of the van. So my undermount propane remote fill kit wouldn't really work in those locations. So I made a hasty decision to mount it to the back of the van and ultimately that was wrong. I should have honestly gotten more creative and found another solution rather than just accepting that that was the only viable spot. So my idea to fix the issue was to take two three inch stainless steel L brackets and modify them to mount that lip along the edge of the van. So they'll go like so, and then the bracket for the remote fill will mount to the bottom of these brackets instead of mounting to a flat surface on the van. Spoiler alert, I have already completed the install. So my idea seems to be functional and I think it's gonna hold up guys. Let me show it to you. Okay, so there's no comfortable way to film this. So <laughs> I am doing my best, sorry guys. Here are what the two L brackets look like. I just cut the uh, tops of them both off, drilled out some new holes. I drilled holes directly through this lip here to mount the brackets to. And then I cut off the back of the L bracket on both of these as well. And now this guy mounts right up underneath the plastic trim on the van. It's perfect. I thought I was gonna have to cut that plastic trim a little bit to make it fit but that was not the case. And overall, I'm really happy with how this has come out here. You can see I painted uh, my holes once I drilled them out to protect, protect from rust, but otherwise all of my components here are either stainless steel or galvanized. These uh, washers are galvanized, everything else is stainless steel. And here's what it looks like on the outside of the van. It's pretty low profile. I've got some big 5 16 inch bolts holding it into place with lock washers. So even after relocating everything, I kind of put it a little bit far back from the tire because I don't want to kick rocks and stuff into the remote fill, at least as much as possible. I want to, I'd like to avoid that. So I put a little bit further back, but not far enough back where it should drag. The other option would have been to put it up here somewhere, but I have my ladder here and it sh would not have reached past the ladder here. And right on the other side of that ladder is our gray tank. So there's not really any room to work down there. So back here was our best option. The passenger side could have been viable, but I didn't want to run my hoses anywhere near the exhaust and uh, all the heat that that's going to put off. So this I think is the compromise and ultimately is going to be a good spot for it. The other thing that I've been working on this morning is the breather for the gray tank. And I've got that finished. Let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. There you go. Everything is primed and glued and it fits up into this little cavity here just right. It doesn't rub on anything. It shouldn't rattle on the van. 
pretty happy with that. I think the only thing that I probably could have done to improve this would have been to make some way to detach it here with uh, some kind of uh, screw-on attachment versus cement, which I used just to make it easier to take apart and clean if I need to. But I don't really foresee that being an issue, so I didn't think it was 100% necessary. Just a step that I could have taken to improve it. So it is about 1.45 on a Tuesday. I have spent entirely too much time today lying under the van, trying to figure out exactly where I want to run the drain lines for the sink and the shower. Let me show you what I got so far. All right, so I've got the van up on ramps, but it's still kind of a tight squeeze down here, so bear with me, the camera angles aren't great, and we're gonna be kind of close up to some things. I'll do my best to work around that, but I just wanna give you guys an idea of what we're working with down here. So I'm currently on the passenger side of the van, this little black thing here hanging down is the, the step to get into the van. So just behind the step here is this compartment. Beside that is the leaf springs. So there's not a whole lot of room here under my cabinetry. There's a lot of pillars and stuff like that. The refrigerator is going to be mounted somewhere over here. The sink will be above the refrigerator. So the drain for that is going to come down above the refrigerator down into the cabinet beside it and right here in that cabinet is where I'm going to drill a hole for my drain line to come through the bottom of the van and my idea is that it will come straight out it'll have a bit of a curve here and then it'll meet a clean out right here so it'll come down it'll curve come down at an angle the clean out will go onto this it'll have one a pipe that goes this way and then have it and in on it that unscrews so that in the event of any kind of clog or anything, any issues, I can pop that clean out off the end and jet, jet it out or put a snake in there or whatever the case may be. It'll just give me a good way to be able to fix any issues with the drainage if I, if I come across them. So it comes out, comes down, clean out, and then the pipe on this end goes over across. It'll go all the way across the van, over the top of the muffler, which I will wrap the ABS in uh, a heat shield so that as it's passing across the muffler, it shouldn't be any risk of it melting. And continue all the way across above the drive line, all the way over to our gray tank, which is over here. So it'll run right along the back side of this where the leaf springs mount, straight over. There'll be another clean out. And then you can't really see it there. Right here is where it will go into the gray tank. So it comes across, clean out on the end, curves into the gray tank. So that'll give me two clean outs to make it easy to fix any drainage issues that I have in here. And then right over here in the middle, not this X, but this one over here, this is the front inside corner of the shower where I'm gonna put my drain for the shower. And the reason for that is, look at all the stuff we got going on over here. There's just a whole, not a whole lot of room. I could mount it in the exact same spot that I did on the other side of the van for the sink, but that doesn't give me any room to put my P-trap. So I have an RV P-trap that's like a long straight pipe and it has a little valve inside basically that allows water to escape but doesn't allow the gases to come back into the van. So that'll come down here, it'll have an elbow, it'll come back straight, and then it'll go to ABS, back to here where it will meet the drain line with a T-valve and continue its way down to the gray tank. Whenever I film something lying on my back like this, I just feel like I look like a tomato. <laughs> so I, I don't know, it just stresses out my face and my face just looks funny. But anyways, that's my idea for the drainage for the van. I think it'll work pretty well. I'm going with AVS versus PVC because it has a higher resistance to heat and cold and it also is less brittle than PVC. So I thought about using like soft tubing. A lot of people use that for their drainage and I just, this stuff kinks really easily and I just don't want to deal with all that stuff. I'd rather use something sturdy and you know, something I'm a little bit more familiar with. I think it'll work out well, we'll see. Plus I think having the ability to jet my lines out underneath the van with the clean out valves will be a huge benefit to doing this kind of system. If you're unfamiliar with cleanouts, 
it's literally just a little square piece. It has like a little square end on it, and then it screws into the end of the cap. I'll show you what it looks like. But yeah, it just makes it a lot easier than taking things apart and all that type of stuff or, or trying to run a snake down a line and then get it to turn the right way and, and do everything you want it to do. It's really difficult sometimes. So uh, as someone who's performed quite a bit of maintenance <laughs> on, uh, on plumbing, I think it's gonna be a huge benefit to our build. So the system in a nutshell would be a pipe that goes all the way across with a T-valve somewhere here in the middle so that our waterless P-trap can run from under the shower to the pipe and the sink can run down through here, through the pipe and everything can go to one place in the gray tank. And then on both sides of the pipe here are these clean out valves, which looks just like this. You can literally just unscrew this and now you can jet water through here or run a snake or whatever you need to do to clean this out when it gets gross and nasty, which is probably probably inevitable. I tried to draw this out earlier. It's not my best work, but you can kind of get the uh, gist of it. Drain line comes down, P-trap here, down out the bottom of the van, curves a little bit to go around that leaf spring, down all the way across, T in the middle, P-trap under the van, shower drain, go back, down, elbow with the uh, clean out into the gray tank. And now Britt is here to help film as I screw the first holes through the bottom of the van and pray that everything goes well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have to deviate a little bit from where I put the X because otherwise my drill isn't gonna fit into this cavity. So I'm just going a little bit further into the cabinet space than I was originally. Everything should be just fine. Yep, I see it. Okay, so the hole for the sink drain is done and now we're gonna go to the driver's side of the van and do the shower drain. It's actually closer than I expected. <laughs> the great thing about doing a pilot hole like this before I use the, uh, the hole saw to cut this out is it gives me two inch or so room for air. <laughs> so now that I've kind of figured out where exactly this is on the inside, I can kind of adjust this hole and maybe move it in about, I don't know, three quarters of an inch or so just to give me more room around the edge. I think that'll be better for the drain overall. Third time's the charm, I guess. <laughs> So I actually ended up doing a third hole. The second hole was too close to the suspension. There's like a pin that goes through to hold the suspension in place. And if I had drilled out with the hole saw there, the, there wouldn't be room for the pipe to go through the floor or to go up to the drain. So I had to do a third hole, just slightly more back and just a little bit further away from the edge just to give myself a little bit more room here. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill out the holes for the uh, pipes to run down through the floor. This blade just isn't cut out for this. Okay, so our hole saw here is pretty cooked. It was fine until we got to the metal, and the metal just wore it out in no time at all. So I'm gonna go run down to Lowe's and purchase a quality hole saw that is made for wood and metal. I'm, I'm assuming that this is for wood only, but I didn't know that when I started, so. Oh, that, that other hole saw was definitely strictly for wood. <laughs> oh, success. It is 100 degrees. It's been a long day. I've got two holes drilled. <laughs> Good morning, and welcome back to another episode of Mike Complains About the Weather. It is a balmy 100 degrees in Northern California today. It's just a perfect day to work on the van. Right now I am prepping my first piece of ABS for install. It's the piece that's gonna go down through the uh, floor underneath the kitchen cabinetry for the sink. 
Um, and the way that I'm prepping that is I've already cut it to length here. And then I'm doing what's called chamfering, which is creating this little bevel along the edge of the pipe. So you're supposed to take off about 22 to 45 degrees off the angle or off the edge of the pipe uh, where it slides into the couplings that you're going to use. Um, and the reason for that is if you just have a flat end, a flat piece of pipe like so, this sh like really sharp edge can act like a squeegee. So when you go to put your pipe fittings together, you put the cement in there and all that stuff, that end piece acts like a squeegee and it can push all the cement up inside the pipe and not actually form a very good seal. So you could end up with leaks or you know, pipes coming apart later on. So you wanna make sure to bevel it or chamfer it. And the way that I'm doing that is with a metal file. They make special tools for this, but I already own this. No need to buy a special tool. Okay, it is actually the next day. Uh, yesterday was a bit of a struggle. I'll show you why and what I'm working on now. So here is my first piece of ABS coming through the floor. It'll come straight up. I'll have a elbow on it here. It goes through this wall over here to the sink for the drain. But anyways, putting this piece in was not as simple as I expected. I thought, okay, well, I'll just put it in the hole. I'll glue it in place. Glue should cure. It'll be a nice, easy hold. No problem, right? Wrong. I uh, tried to use flex seal glue. Um, and the reason for that is that it's pretty good against uh, water. And I thought, oh, I'll kill two birds with one stone. I'll use adhesive that's supposed to work pretty well, but it's also very water resistant and I'll use it to seal up the hole. Well, that stuff doesn't really work very well when it's 100 degrees outside. I put it on, it kind of started to harden for a little bit, but as it got hotter throughout the day, you know, 103 degrees, I think, of uh, all the heat coming off the pavement, whatever, that stuff started to kind of like melt <laughs> and just puddle off of the uh, pipe where I was trying to mount it. And it wasn't really sticking or getting any stronger. So I actually had to go back and get as much of that off as I could and reapply a second adhesive. I think it was a Gorilla Construction adhesive. And I kind of used a clamp, hold it in place so that it wouldn't fall through the floor and did the best I could with that. I actually came through this morning, add a little bit more adhesive to like any spots that there were like small gaps or anything and went through and uh, sealed anything underneath where uh, there was any gaps down there. So it looks good now, it looks pretty sturdy. I'm gonna add something to it though to make sure that it doesn't ever get pulled through the floor or knocked up into the van. I really wanted to use some kind of flange or something that would screw into the bottom of the van or something. Uh, but I really couldn't find anything like that for PVC or ABS. So here's my workaround. So I've got a couple of these uh, soft rubber fittings, one half to one half inch. The reason I got this one was I want to mount it going into on something going into the gray tank so that I can detach it later on and take it apart if I need to. I don't want to use only glue fittings because in the event that I need to take it apart for some reason, I have to cut it. Using something like this, I just have to unscrew these clamps and we're good to go. We can perform any work we need to do. But the second one of these that I got, I've taken, cut in half, and cut a split down the middle on one, or on each one. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it around the pipe at the base, put the clamp down over the top, and then I'll clamp it down like so. And then on the bottom side, where the pipe goes through the bottom of the van, I'll take the other piece, slide it onto the pipe, put the clamp on, clamp it down. That way, this pipe won't be able to slide down or up as long as this is clamped. Okay, so here's something fun to deal with. When I glue this pipe into place, I had it to where it would come down a certain length, I think it was about four inches. When I clamped it and glued it in, it was at four inches, and now somehow the clamp didn't do a very good job last night, and it slid in. So, I have to saw off about an inch of it 
so that when the pipe turns, it comes as close to this beam as possible. I wanna mount it directly to that beam. So uh, I have to saw off about an inch of the pipe and then re-chamfer the end here. It's just a pain in the, you get it. Okay, so I got that piece cut to fit. Uh, it was not easy. I did not have a saw that would fit in that space. I had to go purchase one. I ended up going with this little cobalt multi-purpose saw. It's like a mini hacksaw, but without the uh, little back piece on it. And then I had to lay on my back and slowly saw that thing with my arms in the air for quite some time. Oh, and then I had to do it again because it was still a little bit too long. So that was tough, but it's in, ready to move on. I went ahead and ran the pipe that goes across the van all the way to where the uh, fitting goes on for where it's gonna be to the bathroom, the bathroom P-trap. And now I just need to get the length cut that's gonna go to the end where there's gonna be an elbow that's gonna go to the gray tank. So I've already measured that out. I gotta make some cuts and get everything dry fitted into place. And then I can start actually attaching this stuff, which I can't wait to do because I have spent a ton of time lying on my back under this van in the 100 plus degree heat this week. And it's not fun guys, it really isn't. So that's another day in the books. I'm gonna crawl under the van one more time just for you guys and show you where we're at. So starting on the passenger side, our pipe comes in. It's very solid now with those additional pieces that I put on. It comes in, it elbows down, it comes to our clean out, which there's just enough room to get this cap off if I need to clean it out. I put some plumbing tape on the end of this so that no water should leak out of the end. All these fittings are glued together now. Come over a little bit. I have this little bracket on here. Um, I really just needed this temporarily while I put everything up because I couldn't hold this long pipe into place while I was gluing. I'm not sure if I'm gonna leave it there or if I'm gonna use some kind of strapping instead because it is causing the pipe to kind of bend a little bit because it's pulling up a little bit further than the pipe wants to go because it's not like a perfect straight angle because of this so I don't know we'll see how I want to finish that off so coming across the van you can kind of see that angle that I'm talking about the pipe being out right there that bracket is just kind of forcing it to bend a little bit so we'll see how I want to fix that or if I want to even worry about it okay so driver's side of the van here's my little T and this pipe actually is just floating in place. It doesn't go to anything. It's not glued in or anything. I just wanted to make sure that this T was at the right angle so that it could go underneath this beam here to the shower. So the P-trap here is gonna come down, it's gonna be an elbow and it's gonna come this way. To the same water supply, all the way back over to this corner where I have another clean out. Again, plumber's tape on the end. And the only difference on this end where it goes to the gray tank, I use this soft fitting here in the middle so that A, there's a bit of uh, flexibility here because the end of the tank is kind of warped and bends this piece in a little bit. So I want it to be a little bit more flexible when I'm putting that in and gluing it. But B, I want to be able to take this off and detach it from the rest of the system in the event that I need to, let's say, drop the water tank or whatever. I don't have to cut the pipe and basically repair it. So yeah, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it certainly wasn't easy. And I'll do this part after the shower pan is installed. Um, we don't have a shower pan yet. I'm not sure if we're gonna have one fabricated or if we're gonna make one. Uh, but stay tuned on that. That should be coming relatively soon. Good morning. It's a new day. Luckily, we only have a few things left to wrap up today. 
before we can call it good on this video. The only thing that we aren't going to be able to finish as far as plumbing to the gray tank under the van is the P-trap for the shower. And that's just gonna have to wait until we put the shower pan in. So excited. I am so, so excited to be done with this and not have to spend my hot summer days lying under the van for a while. Knock on wood. So the first thing I'm going to do today is affix the pipe to the bottom of the van using some aluminum strap. And the reason I'm opting for aluminum strap versus the hard pipe hanger that you saw me using before is that hard pipe hanger really pushes the pipe up against the bottom of the van. It has to be flush with the bottom of the van in order to mount it. That's not ideal for a couple of reasons. One, it's not natural for the pipe at that angle and it's causing it to bend. But two, it would prevent me from having any slope in the pipe to the gray tank. I want my pipes to slope at least slightly so that water will naturally run to the gray tank whenever the van is level. Obviously, if the pipe is screwed in directly to the bottom of the frame, it's gonna be flat along the bottom of the frame. So, by using strapping, I'll be able to set it at different lengths on the passenger side versus the driver's side, which should allow me to have a little bit of slope. The second thing I need to do today is install fiberglass around the pipe so that where it runs above the muffler won't melt in the future. Uh, fiberglass is non-flammable and won't melt until it gets to a thousand degrees. So it's a really good choice to insulate in that area, I think, and it'll do a good job of preventing that pipe from melting or warping or anything like that. So that's the best option that I could find anyways. Maybe there's something better out there, but that's what I'm going with. I know fiberglass is toxic and all that stuff and you know, it, you don't really want to handle it as much as you can, uh, but it's on the outside of the van and uh, I'm going to wrap it really well in uh, like aluminum tape and then put clamps around it. So it should be safe, should be secure, shouldn't go anywhere. That's my plan. All right, guys, I think I got that pretty well wrapped up. Let's go down and take a look. Please bear with me. As you can tell behind me here, it's a very tight space. All right, I am laying on the driver's side of the van, right about the middle where there's about the most space. As you can see, I've got my pipe insulated, wrapped in aluminum tape, and clamped. I've got three clamps total. I think that's pretty solid. I don't think that's going to... The insulation is going to come off anytime soon. And like I said, it's uh, fiberglass will not burn and it will not melt until it gets to a thousand degrees. So I think that should be sufficient for the heat that's going to come off of this. ABS is rated to hold a hundred or rated to not melt until it gets to 176 degrees. So I don't need this to be perfect and keep all the heat out just enough that it doesn't heat up to that point. And that goes all the way from the pipe that's gonna go to the shower all the way down to the end. I've got some uh, strapping here as well as some on the other end where I removed the clamp that I had down there. You can see it right in here. I think that's sufficient to hold. The pipe is also glued in on that end to the floor and is going to be glued in here. I may add another strap on this little post here once this pipe goes through and connects and all that stuff, uh, but that's a future project. So I think that's everything. All that's left to do now is test it out for leaks. Wish me luck. What's up guys, it's Monday. Um, just to address the elephant in the room, went and got my hairs cut, trimmed up my beard quite a bit. Feeling good, looking good. Ready to get some work done today. Uh, first thing this morning, I am going to test these drain lines and make sure that everything works the way it's supposed to and we don't have any leaks. So first, let me show you my scientific testing method. After running the water for several minutes, I've got my gray tank about halfway full and not a leak yet. We're looking pretty good. Okay, I've got the gray tank almost completely full. Now it's time to top it off. And then I think we can call this good, guys. So far, no leaks. All right, I got this thing completely full. There is now water in the pipes, just sitting there. 
This little leak right here is the only one I have. And luckily that piece right there isn't glued in. I just needed that little piece of pipe on the end there to uh, attach this drain plug. So that's not permanent. So everything's good. If that's the only leak I have, we're golden. I think we're pretty much done here. There's one more thing that I wanted to show you before we go, and that is our waterless P-traps. So I went with these Hepvo Sanitary Waste Valve P-traps. I believe they're available on eBay. Um, they were around 20 something dollars a piece, and I can't say enough good things about these already. I haven't even installed them yet, and I already love them. So. Uh, the way they work is water goes through the P-trap and out on this end to your gray tank. And then you see that little flap in there. Well, that remains closed at all times when there's no water going through, which prevents any odors or gases from coming up from your gray tank inside the vehicle and, you know, creating that unpleasant experience. So a couple benefits to these. One, they don't have any water in them, obviously, so they don't need to be winterized. Uh, two, uh, being that they don't have water in them, you don't have to worry about that water evaporating and smells coming in the van if it's been sitting in the, in the heat for a while, or if you're going over a bunch of hills, that water could, could drain out of your P-trap and then you might get smells in your van while you're driving or something like that. Uh, with this, you do not have to worry about that. The other benefit and the most uh, beneficial for me was that you can mount this thing either directly straight down from your sink or shower or what have you and uh, mount it straight up and down like that or with the help of this little adapter here you can mount it at a right angle which is kind of perfect when you're trying to conserve space below your drain line so our sink is going to be mounted above our fridge and it's going to drain down and curve to the side to the cabinet next to it because I can't go straight down through the fridge so it's going to reroute and go to the cabinet next to it and then drain out of the van. Uh, great space saving design since I don't have to go down and up and over or down and up and around or what have you. It'll just save probably two or three inches of space below my sink where my fridge needs to be. All right. So I think that's going to do it for this one, guys. Uh, if you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching all the way through to the end. I know that this wasn't my best quality work filming this week, and I apologize. It's uh, incredibly difficult to film under the van in such a tight space. Hopefully this was uh, somewhat informative, and uh, hopefully, you know, it's not too hard to watch, guys. <laughs> I really am trying. I appreciate you. But with that said, have a great week, and hopefully we catch you on the next one. Bye, guys.